Hello everyone and welcome to PeopleSoft Procure to Pay series by PeopleSoft channel. In this series, we are going to study the Procure to Pay cycle in detail in which we will study all the processes which are part of the PeopleSoft Procure to Pay cycle. As part of this series, we are going to study the two functional modules in PeopleSoft. These are PeopleSoft Purchasing and PeopleSoft Accounts Payables. So as this is a first episode in this series, we will start this series by understanding what does a typical procure to pay cycle looks like and what are all the processes which are part of this procure to pay cycle so that we will have an overview of how does this procure to pay cycle looks like. So with that agenda in mind for today, Let's start the discussion. So let's start the discussion by understanding the meaning of the word called procurement. So to procure something means to order something. Now let's say you are working in a manufacturing company and let's take an example that your company manufactures a car. Now, in order to manufacture a car, your company would need lots of raw materials. It can be ordering glass, it can be steel, it can be paints to apply on the car, it can be various chemicals, it can be rubbers or lots of different materials. So your company would use some purchasing applications, for example, people saw purchasing and they will procure these items from the available suppliers. So purchasing modules enables you to create this procurement and order the raw materials from the supplier. Now once you procure these items, so once you procure these items, the next steps involve paying for these items. So once you order something from a supplier and you have received that order, you need to make the particular payment to that supplier. So procure to pay involves PeopleSoft purchasing and PeopleSoft accounts payables. Now let's understand the various business processes which are involved in a typical procure to pay transaction. So let's say you are working in a company and you need to order five keyboards for your organization. In that case, the prerequisite is that you should have a requester role. So once you have a requester role, you create a document called as a requisition. So a requisition is a request for ordering certain items. It can be goods or services. So requisition is just a company's internal document and it has no relation to any supplier. So once you submit the requisition, it is initially in submitted status and it goes to the respective approval for getting the approval. Now here the approver may reject your requisition. In that case, the transaction will not move forward. But if your approver approves the requisition, then the requisition is eligible to source into a purchase order. So. With the help of PeopleSoft delivered process, once a requisition is approved, it is sourced into something called as purchase order or PO in short. So this PO is the official document which will contain the details about the requirements and this document will be sent to the supplier. Remember, requisition is just your company's internal document which will not be sent to the supplier but PO is the official order document which will be sent to the supplier. So once you create the purchase order, it is still residing only in your organization. So you need to send this PO to the correct supplier. In order to do that, we have the process called as PO dispatch and with the help of PO dispatch, the PO is dispatched to the supplier. Here. We have various methods to dispatch a PO such as phone, email, uh, print copy, fax, etc. So based upon the dispatch method, P 
PO is dispatched to the supplier. Now, once supplier receives the purchase order, he needs to work with a buyer of that PO in order to create the purchase order acknowledgements. So, once a PO is created, a buyer has been associated with that particular order and the buyer acts as a point of contact for any queries regarding the purchase order. So, once supplier receives the PO, he needs to create something called as purchase order acknowledgement or POA in short. So, POA acts as an acknowledgement in which the supplier confirms or acknowledges that we have received a purchase order. Now, acknowledgements are important because they serve two important purposes. Let's say we dispatch the PO, but for some reason or some technical issue, supplier did not receive the PO. In that case, we may have an impression that we have dispatched the PO, but the supplier did not receive the PO. So that may create chaos. So POA helps us to avoid this chaos. And the second important point is that let's say we create PO with five keyboards and the price for each keyboard is say $20 per piece. So we created a PO with this price and quantity, but supplier cannot sell this product at $20. And supplier says, that for some reason, due to the recent hike, he needs to change the price per piece from $20 to $21. In that case, he can create a purchase order acknowledgement and update the price in that acknowledgement from $20 to $21. And once he submits the POA or the acknowledgement to the buyer, the buyer has options to either accept the acknowledgement or make some negotiations with the supplier. So that's the typical workflow of POA. Now let's say the buyer accepts the acknowledgement generated by the supplier. Then the supplier is now ready to start working on the order. So the supplier will start working on the order. He will collect the required goods. He will pack it and then he will send this goods to the buyer. So exactly where he will send these items, buyer would have provided something called as ship to location. So this is the place where supplier will send the goods. Now at the ship to location, once the goods are arrived, there is something called as receiving center. Now, supplier will send the goods to the receiving center or to the ship to location and along with the goods, supplier will send a document called as invoice. So, invoice is like a bill to the buyer saying these are the items you have ordered and this is the total amount which you are supposed to pay. So, it is similar to how we go to a restaurant and after having our food, we get a bill from the restaurant saying these are the items you order and this is the amount which you are supposed to pay. So that's the invoice. Now what receiving center will do is they will receive the items which are provided by the supplier and they will create a document called as receipt. So a receipt is an internal document. It's a company's internal document which will contain what are the items that we have received from the suppliers. So if let's say we receive five keyboards, then the receiving team will create a receipt with the item of keyboard and quantity of five. So if it is a PO receipts, that means if it is a purchase order receipts, in that case, they will link the particular purchase order with this receipt. Now, while creating receipt, we have an option to create return to vendor request or RTV in short. Let's say we ordered five keyboards, but out of five keyboards, two keyboards are damaged. In that case, we cannot accept the items and we need to return the two damaged keyboards to the supplier. That is called as RTV or return to vendor. Now, 
the receiving center will say we received five quantity so the received quantity will be five but there is something called as accepted quantity in this case they will have an accepted quantity of three and they will create an rtv for two keyboards so that is one of the feature if you want to return some items to the supplier so here as we receive the item the first part of our transaction that is the purchasing part or the procurement part is completed well now we receive the items and now we need to pay to the supplier so from here the accounts payable transaction starts so now we are done with purchasing and we are entering into accounts payables now what happens is once we receive the items and once the receipt has been created now the accounts payable person creates a document called as people sort voucher now he creates a voucher based upon the invoice which was sent by the supplier so let's say the invoice says uh, there are five keyboards which the supplier sent and the price per keyboard is 21 dollars so the total is 105 dollars that's the liability on the organization so the accounts payable person will create a voucher with the amount of 105 by entering the invoice details provided by the supplier and as we have completed this transaction through a po this voucher will be a purchase order voucher so on the voucher we will have details about the PO as well as invoice. So once the voucher has been entered into the system, the next step is the voucher will require the approvals from the respected authorities. And once the voucher is approved, it will go through a process called as matching. So based upon the configuration, we may have two-way matching, three-way matching, four-way matching or receipt only matching. So matching basically is the process of verifying that we are paying only for the items that we have ordered. So what matching does is it matches your purchase order with your voucher with your receipt to make sure that you are being billed correctly by the supplier and you are paying only for the correct amount. So if everything is fine and if these documents are matched correctly with each other, the voucher will have a status of matched. However, if there are any mismatches or if there is any discrepancy, in that case, the voucher will have matching exceptions. Remember, only matched voucher are eligible for payment. And when it comes to voucher with matching exceptions, the accounts payable person needs to resolve these exceptions in order to make the voucher go through payment. So that's matching, a very important process. So once matching is successful, we go for something called as voucher posting. So voucher posting is basically a process of creating accounting entries. So in voucher posting, we create accounting entries between the expense account and the control account. Expense account, we can get it from the PO distribution, whereas control account is set up in the accounts payable configurations. So once a voucher has been posted successfully, it becomes eligible to go for payment. Now, each voucher will have a due date and scheduled pay date so these dates are calculated based upon the invoice date and the payment terms of your supplier for example if the supplier has payment terms of net 45 in that case the scheduled pay date will be your invoice date plus 45 days so once the particular scheduled pay date arrives the voucher is paid successfully with the help of pay cycle now, once the payment has been made to the vendor, there is another process called as payment posting. So earlier, we created the accounting entries between expense account and control account through voucher posting. 
but once we make the payment we need to create the accounting entries between the control account and cash account that is called as payment posting so once payment posting process is successful we enter into the last section of this transaction and that is creating the accounting entries into general ledger so once payment posting is completed then a journal is created for this expense with the help of journal generator process and the journal goes through journal edit process and if everything is fine the journal is finally posted into the general ledger so in this way we record the expense that we made in our organization into the general ledger all right guys so that's the typical flow and these are all the processes which are involved in a procure to pay cycle in peoplesop system so as part of this p2p series we are going to study all of these business processes in detail so that we will have a fair understanding about each and every business process in a procure to pay transactions all right guys that's it for today's episode and now i hope you have some basic idea about the people sort procure to pay business transactions in the next episode we will start our journey with requisition in which we will understand what is requisition who can create a requisition and how to create a requisition see you in the next episode thank you